May the Lord bless the hearing, reading, and doers of this holy word. six feet up, not six feet down. I can hear it and I can enjoy the voice of the pastor bringing your word to me and to all my fellow congregation members here. I sat here and go through every day of my, um, towards my retirement, complain about my pains. I say my feet hurt, my back hurt. I need to get everything taken care of so I can get medically prepared when I got out. And that used to be a complaint until I started preparing for this Veterans Day. And I was sitting there complaining about my feet, and I was meeting veterans and com men in combat arms that didn't have feet. I was sitting there talking about, oh, I, I don't have enough money in my pocket. I, I wish I had a little more funds I can give and, and spend more on me until I started walking down the streets of St. Louis and saw people had no homes and no money at all. So, like I said, I'm thankful that I'm here. So, if you don't mind, as we go to the Lord in prayer, just think back on what God has blessed you with. We are running a race every day. Now, you got to think about we're not going to win every race, yeah, yeah. but you want to be able to wake up and God going to bless you to run it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so maybe I can just thank him for that, that I can continue running this race. Because when you're six feet down or when you're laid to rest, there's no more running then. You can't go back and get yourself right then. It's too late. And you need to look around at people and, and give them their flowers now. Don't be the loudest person at their casket shouting and saying what you should have, could have, would have did when you can do it today. So, Lord, I'm thankful. Pastor, I'm thankful. Congregation, I'm thankful to be here. Lord, let's go to your, your name. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. First of all, dear Lord and Father, thank you for the gift of life. Once again, thank you for allowing us to be here among the living. Bless those who are unable to be here today. Bless those who desire to be here just couldn't make it. And bless those ailments or anything that might be preventing them to get them in a position where they can get here to your house. Lord, bless our pastor. Continue to give him strength. Continue, continue to give him the will and continue investing in him your Holy Spirit. Lord, bless the Faith House family and his friends and those that's coming with us. And bless our visitors may be here today because there's so many other places they could have went, but they chose to come here. And like, Lord, we ask you that you open our ears so that we may hear your voice through Pastor as he receive, and receive your internal wisdom. Open our spirits so that we may know your leading guidance. And open our hearts so we may receive your wonderful love. We ask all this in your glorious name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may have your seat. Give the deacons a hand. Amen. Uh, praise team. What y'all eat this morning? Y'all eat, y'all eat praise Wheaties. Jesus. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you. Man, we ain't got no bugs, but if we had them, they'd have been dancing this morning. Jesus. Amen. Amen. So uh that's the choir. Come on up, and we're going to get ready to, 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 to preach, preach. How you doing, baby girl, back there? I heard you was in charge yesterday. They said, Mom was at a retreat, so you had to call the shot. Did you cook? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I heard you a good cook, though. Amen. Said, she probably bought me a plate. I said, she probably bought me a plate. What you mean? <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Kirk Franklin here, you say same family.
glory, 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 glory. <laughs> Ooh, my God, my God. How you 
Give God some praise for the choir and the musicians. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I might forget some stuff, but one thing, I will never forget. Lord, have mercy. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> Y'all know. Y'all have sang, played. Y'all even got Sierra about to get the Holy Ghost rock on. She like, go ahead on, see, go ahead on. They, they don't know, see, they don't know. <laughs> Amen. Give them another hand, y'all. They, Jesus. Ooh, Lord. Man, that was a Holy Ghost workout. Amen. We praise God. From, from the beginning all the way through. Jesus, what a worship in the place. Amen. Amen. I wish I could have took all y'all down there to South Beach. A lot of folk down there need some deliverance. They, re they remember the wrong things. Amen, somebody. I thought I had to get my mothers on a plane to come down there. Amen. And yeah, man, 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 man. Minister James said, you got your pair, but I, I, I can't go. Lady, Lady Michelle said, say, I, I, I can't go. Amen. I was trying to get some of the brothers to come down there. And, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Uh, yes. Florida is very interesting, very interesting, amen, amen. I, I say thank you again to uh, Lady Hiawatha and, and, and Deacon Larry. I'm glad they put me on the other side, staying of Miami. They had me over there on the ocean view. And I ain't know now, uh, I gotta get more details because one thing, Minister Mangan, he said stay away from South Beach. He never told me why. Well, what's wrong with South Beach? You know, it's house nice. South Beach, North Beach. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And then it just so happened all the good restaurants in South Beach. <laughs> Matter of fact, the main restaurant where well, heaven told me to go, but she ain't tell me the other part. <laughs> I'm sitting there staying. It's a five-star restaurant. You know, you're sitting there and eating the uh, seafood risotto, and I'm, I'm sitting there, and, and so it's like right there on the main strip. So while you sitting there with all the bougie folk eating, they just walking up and down the street half naked. <laughs> I was like, Lord Jesus. I said, boy, I'm glad I'm saved. C come on. <laughs> now, now, I will say, don't know nothing, nothing saved. If you ain't even sure you're saved, don't go down there. Come on, say man, somebody. Amen. Because I thought I would have to call some help, get some of these folk delivered. I thought to say, uh, Sean, Cody. Mr. J, Mr. LD. Hey, Big Friday, I started calling you, call you down there. Amen. Hey, y'all come with y'all anointed hands. And let them know we will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously. That's what we've been saying, right, Deacon Willie? Amen. Amen. Deacon Willie say, <laughs> Deacon Willie say, well, I ain't married, Pastor, so, but we, but we still. <laughs> Amen, amen. Man, I tell you, all I say to you, if you go to South Beach, make sure you're saved and know the Lord for real. You got any doubts, don't go. I mean, every shade. Come on, say man, somebody. I don't know why y'all playing. Don't, don't like chocolate, high yellow vanilla. Red bone, chocolate, come on, say man. Okay, I'm going to leave y'all alone. I'm going to leave y'all alone. I want y'all to know I went down there saved. I came back just as saved. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. Amen. My, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing because uh, y'all know uh, having my baby. And I, I, As much as I've been by the ocean, I ain't never went in the ocean. So this time I said, I'm going to go stick my foot in the ocean. 
And uh, I wasn't going for it. Yeah, you know, I didn't want to see how I felt to be Peter. So they've been somebody. Amen. Since Jesus wasn't there to snatch me, I didn't go too far. But it was so funny. I, I shot my, my, my God baby heaven. I, I said, heaven, I'm in, I'm in the ocean, girl. I'm in the ocean. And, and I think she's going to say, I'm so proud of you. She said, who's taking the picture? <laughs> I said, the, the man. <laughs> but they were, oh, you got a boot on her. You tell me. Amen. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I ain't got to go in the ocean no more, though. Because cause I ain't know that the sand ain't even. And I'm up there trying. I ain't go far. And then all of a sudden, this wave hit me. And I go down head first. That water salty for real. Man, y'all ought to see me rolling back to the shore. I was like, the devil. They going way out there saying, how far can they go? I'm like, how close can I stay? Amen. Today, y'all, uh, just for a little while, just for a little while in the series, I want, what I want to do is uh, I want to kind of reiterate some major things from uh, last week uh, because it was a, a great text on last week and uh, I was just so wiped out on, on last week. Uh, you all have no idea. Just preaching last week was just, it, it was uh, really a stretch. I was, I was just worn out from going all the way from uh, Friday up until that Sunday morning and some things I may have missed or omitted that you really need to get. And so I was, I was looking at that, and so that's what I'm going to do. And then we're going to move on and do communion so you all can, uh, can uh, go another long week. I was in Miami last week. I have to be in New York next week. So uh, really trying to preserve the, uh, the, the energy. And uh, I don't ever want to shortchange y'all. I, you know, like I said, I was tired, so today I tried to drink some extra fluids and whatnot, you know. So... Uh, go to the same scripture, go to the same scripture, and it's in uh, Psalms, uh, 121st Psalms, 121st Psalms, and there's three things that we don't want to miss in this scripture, three things we don't want to miss, and I'm going to paint those out, and then we're going to, to move forward. In the 121st number of Psalms, uh, we're looking at uh, helper, keeper, preserver. There's three things that God is uh, to those who belong to him. And you'll see them when you read it, because the first thing David says is, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. I told you he is a helper. He says, my help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. So my help is not restricted. Because my help comes from the one who made heaven and earth. Then it tells us some of the resume of the help. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee. I told you that he is a keeper. We saw that he was a helper. It said that he that keepeth thee will not slumber. In other words, some folk, uh, uh, you may trust them, but you're often wary about if they can stay awake or if they would go to sleep. Some of y'all suffering from that right now. Come on, say amen, somebody. I'm, I'm glad that he don't slumber because I see some slumbering uh, spirits right now. And, uh, help me out. Help me out. N nudge your neighbor. Say, neighbor. He don't slumber. So right now, I need you not to slumber. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. <laughs> say, <laughs> he that keepeth thee will not slumber. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Why? Because once again, the Lord is thy keeper. He is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee, 2019, shall not smack thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee. I told you he is a helper. He is a keeper. And he is a preserver. And tell your neighbor, if he's a preserver, he will preserve you from going to sleep. 
Come on, say amen, somebody. So if you find yourself now and say, Lord, help me and keep me and preserve me. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. Now, y'all know I wouldn't keep saying it if I didn't see eyes rolling on me. Now, I'm, I'm just trying not to call names and point nobody. I'm trying to help you out. Amen. Say amen. <laughs> he shall preserve me how long? Thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. I told you one great thing about this scripture is it's what's called a call and response scripture. Yes, sir. This is not just a scripture of one entity speaking, but it's actually two entities having interaction. Yes, one thing we see is the affirmation of God, somebody who's affirming who God is. And that's what the first person is doing. But then we have the confirmation of God and who he is by the second person that's speaking in this text. So we see two people here. We see two people in these verses, one through eight. Two people are having a conversation. They're dialoguing, and they're dialoguing. Two people are dialoguing and having a conversation. Two people, and one person is affirming, and the other person is confirming. So I just want to teach this text and teach what the text is telling to teach. Because a text out of context is a pretext. And that's one thing you never want to violate. Because anytime you take a text out of context, you kind of pretext. And anytime you get a pretext, you take it out of context. And you never want to get kind. So I want to teach what the text is telling to teach. Can I teach the text? Yeah. Amen. Thank you very much. I appreciate it so much. So, Psalms 121, verse 1 and 2. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> you say, just keeping up with the text kept me woke. Come on. Tell us to teach the text. What te text out of context is the pretext. <laughs> so, Psalms 121, I tell you there's two speakers. The verse 1 and 2 is the first speaker. First speaker is talking to God, who God is, what God is. He says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. Now, what you have to understand is right here, uh, the way that it's written grammatically, if you don't look at it in the original language, if you don't look at it in, ev in other versions, you won't understand. When he says that, uh, I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help, if you go to the other versions, whence cometh my help is actually a question. Yes, but if you read it, he said, I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. He's really saying, I will lift my eyes to the hills, but where does my help come from? And so when you go and you start reading the, uh, the English Standard Version and NIV verse, that's why I tell some uh, people a lot of times, a lot of times you'll see preachers or if you're a student of the word, they'll be sitting there with eight different books because you want to go all the way back to the original thing. And so that's why I tell you, because you're going to understand the reason that makes so much sense is because there's a lot of things that are going on. And when you understand that there is a question in the middle, then you'll understand what's actually happening, being, happening here. So, so those first verses is just, you know, uh, uh, talking about who God is. But the second verses, the second set of verses, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, it's talking about God is a keeper. And then it tells you what he does as a keeper. So it tells you that he is a helper, but it tells you what he does as a keeper. Now, when you see that uh, those second sets of uh, words and uh, that word keeper, it is the Hebrew word that we call what? Shemar. Y'all remember that last week, right? Y'all y'all remember? Some of y'all may have thought that was a dancer. <laughs> Shemar. No, Shemar is a Hebrew word. See, some of y'all forgot y'all Hebrew already. Amen. Amen. But Shemar, it literally just suggests to us that when it says that God is a keeper, it's saying that he safeguards us. It says that he secures us. It says that he keeps us stable. Somebody say stable. So he keeps us situated and he keeps us stable in the positions that we are. And that's what we need. We, we need to have God who is a keeper and a helper. That's why Darrell Coley wrote the song. He says he will keep thee in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on him. Say amen, somebody. So, so when we look at this, we look at this. We go to verse 1, and I wanted to explain to this what's happening right here. What's happening right here to give this text in context to kind of put you on a story journey. 
Back then, when they went to church, they didn't just go around the corner, Brandon. They didn't just have church up the street, but they had to go to the holy city of Jerusalem. They had to travel miles and miles and miles just to go to church. Now, some of y'all sitting here like, man, I don't want to travel two miles. Come on, say amen, somebody. Can, can you imagine that just to go to church if you had to leave your house Thursday? Come on, say amen, somebody. Instead of 30 minutes, I wish I had some help up in here. But, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so, so, basically, if you know, as uh, Makia told us when she talked to us about Psalms, when she did a great job on last week on Youth Sunday, and she talked about Psalms and, and a lot of things, a lot of us probably didn't even know about Psalms, but Psalms are really a group of songs. They are a, a group of songs, and, and, and so basically what's happening in this psalm is that they are on their way to Jerusalem. They're on their way to the holy city, and on the way to the holy city, they begin to sing. They begin to sing on their way to where? The holy city. Now, I want y'all to understand that they don't begin to sing after they get there. They begin to sing on their way to church. So you see, that's what we have to understand. The reason it's so difficult and so tough, a lot of times the praise team has to kill themselves and the choir has to kill themselves. And I mean, you just, it's just like pulling teeth. We got to be cheerleaders and we got to be pom-pom instructors. Come on, say amen, somebody. We got to be gymnastic instructor just to give somebody some praise. But, but, but what you got to understand is that when you think about you're on your way to the filling station. When you just think about it, you're on your way to get some help, on your way to get some nutrients, on your way to get something to give you power to go on. You ought to get excited and you just think about it. That's why grandmama said, she said, I can thank myself happy. And, and, and so that I can understand that makes sense. That makes sense how, how, how effective it is when you have church on your way to church. Come on, say amen, somebody. See, on your way to church, you should be getting mad at nobody who you should have snapped on, who you should have got with, who you should have got straight, what you should have did. No, when you're on your way to church, you should be worried about, did I leave those greens on the stove? Did I turn the stove off? Do I have a cornbread cooking? It ought not be about your cornbread. I wish I had some help up in here. That's, that's why I like the old saints, because the old saints didn't do nothing on Sunday but praise God. I wish you would turn a washing machine. Y'all ain't going to help me. Wasn't no washing on Sunday. If it wasn't clean, you went dirty. I wish I had some help up in here. It wasn't doing nothing on Sunday but praising the law. That's why I can't understand all these folk. They talking about, well, you know, I, I, I had to go to one of them churches that have 45 minute service because I just want to be in and out. No, the, the Bible never said, remember the Sabbath hour. It said, remember the Sabbath day. That means the whole day ought to belong to God. Even when you leave church, you ought to go home and still be praising God. You ought to go home and God say, I gave you seven. Can I get one? I wish I had some help up in here. Because let's think about a lot of folks when, when, when you go to church with, 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 with the early service. If you really ask them why they want the early service, because it gives me more of my day. I'm just saying something just to be saying something. If I ain't talking to you, I ain't talking to you. But you know, in my day, well, I thought it was his day. Come on, say amen, somebody. You had my, 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 my. You, you, you see, my, 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 my. You had all your minds. Okay, let me, 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 let me go on. Some of y'all already got me on the time. I see you right now. Say amen, somebody. I was just wondering when you go to the concert, why you don't have nobody with no time. Come on, say amen, somebody. <laughs> but they were having church on their way to church. And I don't know about y'all, but I just believe that church would be a lot better if we had church on our way to church. Can you imagine on your way here? And you are there, instead of getting mad at somebody or trying to read, you shouldn't even be driving and reading Facebook anyway. 
But can, can, can you imagine you're on your way to church, and on your way to church, you're just thinking about, boy, look at God has blessed me. Oh, God has put food on my table. He put clothes on my back. My children ain't half crazy. They in their right mind. They doing good. I got health and strength. Can you imagine? When you run up in here, you run up in here. You ain't looking for nobody to gossip with nobody. You run up in here because you want it. God has been good. Come on, say it, man, somebody. Instead of snapping on somebody on the parking lot. You see them outside the window. You don't know who you. I'd be like, I hope they're talking to the enemy. Okay. Oh, Lord, Lord. The enemy, ain't name, his name ain't John or Jolene. Come, come on, say it, man, somebody. So, so let me go, let me go, because if we had church on our way to church, then we would arrive in the right church spirit. The right church spirit is to come up and hear blessing the Lord. What did it say? It said, enter his gates, not with crying and complaining, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with so when I come in here, I ought not be pouting, I ought not be complaining, but I ought to come in here praising God because if we tell the truth, you might be struggling, you might go going through hell, but if you tell the truth, if God don't do one more thing, he's already done more than I deserve. He's already gave me more than I should have had. Can I preach up in here? Come on, say amen, somebody. You might not be driving a Bentley, but you ain't walking. Come on, say amen, somebody. Sometimes you got to be reminded well, look, what Deacon L.D. said. You sit there talking about my, my toe hurt. Do you know you ought to shout because you know it's hurting? Come on, say it, man, somebody. You talking about your back hurt? You ought to shout because you know if your back hurts, you got a nerve that you can feel. I wish I had some help up in here. And sometimes you ought to just jump and say, why are you acting crazy? I'm acting crazy because my butt hurt, my back hurt, my toe hurt. I'm acting crazy because I know it hurts. Where my real folk at? You ever thought about that? It's a blessing to know. You know, girl, 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 I got a headache. It's a blessing to know that I got a head that I know ache. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all making this. Come on, say it, man, somebody. So tell somebody, start having church on your way to church. So he said, I will lift my eyes to the hills. Now, I told you. In the original Hebrew, you need to understand how this is written because when you understand how it is written, it really blows your mind. These are not three declarative statements. Declarative statements is something where I just declare something. It's not three declarative statements, but it is some what you call an interrogative statement in the midst of a declarative statement. So when I declare something, I'm, I'm declaring something. But then when I do an interrogative, come on, say amen, somebody. He says, he says, uh, 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 I will lift up my eyes to the hills. But he said, where does my help come from? So I will lift my eyes to the hills. I'm declaring what I'm going to do. Now, when I say where my help comes from, that's interrogative. So I've got declarative. I've got interrogative. And interrogative is a question. And then I come back with a declarative that answers the question. Come on, priest pastor. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? I come back. He does not wait for anybody. He doesn't wait until they come back on the line. He comes back. I had a declarative. I had an interrogative. But then I come back with a declarative. I said, my help comes from. Did y'all catch that? He, he said, he said and, and you ain't got to wear everybody. Because uh, I don't know about y'all, but I think it's safe to assume that you are at one of these places right now. Either you're in heaven, and you ain't there, we ain't there, or you're on earth. So what the psalmist says is that, he says, you know, my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. So that means wherever you are, he your help. Do y'all catch that? Oh, y'all playing with me. Come on, come on, play with me. Don't be playing with me, y'all. Wherever you are, if you're in heaven, or you're in on earth, that my help comes from that. And so I will lift my eyes. So, so right now, we already know there's declarative, there's interrogative, and then there is declarative. So, see here, and the first thing you see is he said, I will lift my eyes to the hills. So first of all, you see person number one. I will lift my eyes to the hills. When's coming my help? My help cometh from 
the Lord. Now, the second speaker, now, some, some concordances and some commentaries say that it was a person in the congregation. Somebody said it was somebody that's coming back from Jerusalem. It doesn't matter. It don't, it don't matter who, who it was. We weren't there. We all know. But Lady Michelle, the second person, is probably saying, Brandon, you know, hey, you lift your eyes to the hills. You already answered your own questions. But, but let me tell you about the help that you're about to get. Say amen, somebody. So, so, so right now, now, speaker number two is saying, can I just give you my two cents about the God that you're talking about? He says, he would not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth Israel shall not slumber nor sleep. Now that is deep, y'all. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Now why is that deep? Because they're going up a mountain. They're going to Mount Zion. They're, they're climbing a mountain to go to the worship. Now when you're going upward and you're inclining, you're going upward but you're coming from backward, if you don't have something to help you, you'll slide back. So, ain't nobody pushing you. So, when you're climbing a mountain trying to get to church and you're going up, one of the concerns would be like, what's going to keep me from rolling back down? Well, the psalmist tells you, the person that's your keeper, the person that's your helper. It says that, 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 that he's going to keep you, and it says that he will not allow your foot to be moved. You're walking up slopes. You're walking up hills. And one thing that you are concerned about is what if my feet slip? Because, you know, everybody going up the mountain, they may not be blessed to have parents named James and Michelle because their son wears Jordans. And we know that Jordans got grip. And so Elijah might not slide down. $200 tennis shoe, they should have grip and glue. But <laughs> so Elijah might not, but if I got some of my skis on, they don't know about no skis, Cody, back in the day, where you be running a class, you slide all the way down the hall, ain't no grip, ain't nothing on the, ain't, ain't nothing, you just, it's all, everybody call them skis, because they like you was on skis. So this helps somebody who didn't grow up with Jordans on, but who had some skis. And so he keeps us from sliding back. In other words, when I'm going up the mountain, I'm going in progression, but I've got a helper who keeps me from shifting from my progression to digression. Is this helping anybody? So, so, so God keeps me, and he keeps me secure. He keeps me with his constant current. Now, the one thing you got to understand is that in life, I don't care what you do, there are going to be some places of instability you will find yourself stumbling upon. I don't care how, I don't care how careful you walk. Life is just like walking on ice. Have you ever been, I mean, okay, you ain't got to tell nobody, just look at it happen to you, but you ever been out there, you, you walk out there, oh, it's slippery. And you know, we all, you know, you might not have no ego, but everybody looking around and see if anybody watching. And so you'd be like, I ain't falling today. I mean, you walk real, especially y'all be trying to walk cute on ice. That, that's the first thing. That's your mistake right there. You can't be cute on ice. I mean, you can't be cute on, you can't be on ice like, you know, you can't be cute on ice. On ice, you got to tell somebody, you ain't got to be cute, you got to be careful. And this is just me. I don't care how careful you are. You walk, ah, boom! First thing, you look up, see if anybody looking. <laughs> Lift your eyes to the, come on, say amen, somebody. And, <laughs> and, 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 and some of y'all, I mean, I, I need my real folk, my real saints. I'm, 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 I'm not going to lie, and I repent, but if I see somebody fall, I mean, once I find out you're okay, I'm laughing. <laughs> Am I the only one? Am I the? I, I know, yeah, yeah, uh huh. Y'all so spiritual. Are you okay? Now, I know y'all say butt, right? Just to, just to say, group, I see you fell flat on your butt, right? 
Okay, just want to make sure. Amen. No, we ain't got nobody to use other language in here. Or do we? My, I don't, I don't want to. We don't have no cusses in here, do we? Do we? Okay. Boy, Maddie laughs a lot. Maddie? <laughs> Maddie told her herself. Ah! Oh, Lord, man. All right. Y'all point that way. We take the cousin spirit. <laughs> so no matter where you do, life will put us in some unstable situations. And so right now, even though the, t- the text and the context is showing us a mountain, it's also referring to us in what we call the rhema word or the in-season word is that life is like that for us. No matter how careful you are, we'll find ourselves in some unstable, sticky, sinking, and sometimes stinking situations. Oh, come on, preach, Pastor. We got you all by yourself. But thank God that we have a God who will keep us from falling into the cracks and the craziness of, 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 uh, of circumstances. Say amen, somebody. So tell somebody, thank God, keeping us from slipping. Not only will God keep us from slipping and keep us stable, he'll also keep us sane. Do you know the only reason we ain't lost our mind in some situations, the only reason that that we ain't caught a case and doing time right now is because God kept us. Some of y'all know right now, you need to tell somebody, you just don't know. It wasn't nobody but God that I didn't break you off a little. Yep. Do I have any real folk up in here that there are some folk that you know right now as saved as you are, as saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, you will speak in, in, in tongues when the Spirit gives utterance and all of that, but just tell the truth. Let me tell y'all something. That was one time. If God hadn't kept me, I'd have cut you. Where, where, where are my real folk? Where, where, are my, where, where are my real folk there? I'm talking about folk that ain't still got the blade, but at one time. Come on, say, and, and it wasn't a butter knife. Come on, come on, say amen, somebody. One of them steak knives you kept from the restaurant. Y'all ain't going to help me. Anyway, so he keeps us, and he also shields us. He shields us. I told you last week, I love it. He shields us with supernatural sufficient surveillance. He shields us. Somebody say shields us. The Bible says that he is a shade. Upon thy right hand, sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The second speaker is saying, yeah, he's your help. You know who he is. But he's saying, also, you need to know that he also serves as a shield. In other words, he keeps us from elements by day and enemies by night. Because whenever you were going up to Jerusalem, whenever you were going up Mount Zion, when it got dark, there would be little robbers and stuff that was happening in the crevices of the mountain. And so they waiting on you to come up in there with that Michael Kors purse. Come on, say amen, somebody. They, they, they waiting on that, on that Dooney and, and, and Burke and that, you know, you know that, that, them four $500 purses and wallet. They waiting on you. And not to welcome you to church, but they waiting on you because they want that stuff. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So he lets us know that, 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 that God is a shield because some folk will attack you in the day and some folk are coward, they attack you at night. And so he says that he's shade. Now, once again, you need to understand a, 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 a connotation in the correct contextual formation. Because right now, that's why you have to read the Bible, because a lot of times when you see shade in 2019, it's a negative thing. Girl, she threw some shade at you. She ain't doing nothing but throwing shade. She's just acting like it's a hypothetical. Ain't no hypothetical, girl. That's all you. But when you go to this and you understand the shade that's being talked about in this text is a good thing. Because what it's saying is that God provides a cover for craziness. He provides a shield from nonsense. He provides an umbrella from haters who trying to take you out. So right here in this context, shade is a good thing. So in other words, what the shade does, it's like right now, the shade protects you from the sun. Because if you're going up the mountain, and you know how hot it was over there, if you're going up the mountain, that sun is beaming. 
That son is baking you down. So now you've got shade that protects you from the heat. And God is saying, some folk like the sun. They shining on your life to beat you down. They shining on your life to knock you down. They're shining on your life to devalidate you. They're shining on your life to take you out. And God said that he is a shield. He is shade that covers you. Anybody glad about God being the shade? And so, so the psalmist wants us to know. He, he wants us to know that, that God is, is shade. And, and, and it says, you know, uh, enemies at night. Y'all know some crazy stuff happen at, at night. When you start talking about night, they start talking about the, the lunar hours. Well, a lot of lunar sea happens during the lunar hours. Say amen, somebody. How many of y'all know some crazy stuff happen at night? I wish y'all wasn't so saved that you would know that some crazy stuff happened at night. I, I just wish I had some folk who, who weren't too saved to go back to 1984 and uh, 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 Houdini. Yeah. And he told us some stuff come out. At <laughs> okay, see. And everybody just gave their age away. You know, uh, uh, uh. Just tell your neighbor, if, if, if you don't know, after church, just ask one of these millennials. Now, some of y'all asking somebody already. Wait till after church over. You just know some crazy stuff came out at night. It got so crazy that Houdini wrote a song. And I ain't going to say what he said. All I, I ain't going to say who it was. But all I know is what they did. And he said, they came out it. Yeah. Uh, all right, say amen, somebody. Lord Jesus. Ooh, pastor. How, how, how you learn that? Thank you, Sierra, for helping me out. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's for, that for your time. You, and some of y'all already Googling what happened in 1984. And I thought Houdini was a musician. A, a musician. A musician. <laughs> but no, you, you, some of y'all going to be like, oh, no, you didn't. But what I want y'all to understand, right, and I got to go, y'all, I got th uh, 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 five minutes. <laughs> but I want us to understand, the thing that shouts us right here is that there is so many things in our lives that is coming to destroy us. There's so many things coming in our life that's coming to knock us down. And so when I know about the shade, that's really a shout situation right there. Because what it says is that there's a lot of stuff coming to take us out. Like right now, sleep is taking Minister Rashad out. So Deacon Willie, help him, to touch him, touch him. Because the, the, the spirit of sleep right now, y'all know, it's his 30th, birth, his 30th birthday. So he might have been doing 30 birthday things, amen. But right now... <laughs> Now, now, he says that he works overnight and we praise God, but we can help him because God is a what? And a what? And a what? Oh, God, we got you. We got you, man. We got you. We <laughs> but Rashad was trying to hold on. Rashad was like, I just want you to fall on that floor over there. We're going we're gonna to act like you were slain in the spirit and not with the sleep demon. Okay. <laughs> so, it's things that's trying to take us out. But the shout is that God steps, y'all, in between us and what's coming after us and blocks it. Tell somebody that's a shout right there. There are some things that could kill us, some things that could take us out, but God loves us so much that God will step in between what's trying to kill us and he steps in between and he keeps us. Can I preach? Some of you right now, some of you right now, you got to understand, you got to just give God glory for the stuff that he blocked. Yeah. See, what you want you to understand, we be shouting for the stuff that we saw. But do you know if God gave a printout of the stuff that you missed, of the accidents that you could have been taken out, of the situation that could have took you out, Sometimes you ought to say, God, I, I, I don't know what I'm shouting about, but I know if you stopped it, it's a worth a shout. So sometimes you ought to just bless God even for what you don't know because he knows what he knows and God knows best. Can I preach? Tell somebody, thank God for keeping me 
from some stuff and shielding me. Now, I got one more thing, y'all. I'm gone. One more thing. Uh, uh, uh. It says the enemies, a lot of times our enemies ain't just outside of us. He's a keeper from external, but sometimes the greatest enemy is the inner me. Come on, say amen, somebody. Y'all remember Pogo the comic strip? Pogo the comic strip, he, he wrote something, and he must have been running around town, heaven, he ran around town, and I could just see him going out of town. Where's the enemy? Where's the enemy? Where's the enemy? Where's the enemy? And he said that Pogo the comic strip, he stopped Lady Shirley, he said, I have found the enemy, and he is I. Just like that script this morning, sometimes the enemy, the reason you miss him is because you're down the stairs across the street and you miss your mirror. Amen. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. So sometimes we ought to praise God for keeping us from us. Amen. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. Do I have any real folk that know that God in some seasons had to protect us from our own silly selves? Amen. Come on now. It was some stuff we found ourselves caught up in, dipped in. No, we shouldn't have been in. I wish I had some help up in here. And don't act like you didn't like it because you wouldn't have stayed in it so long. I wish I had some help. But, but we know we shouldn't have been in it. We got played in it and we dipped in it. But God blocked it from taking us out. Ain't somebody here glad that God didn't kill us when we were in our mess, when we were tripping and dipping and flipping? Ain't you glad that God still had grace and didn't take me out? Can I preach up in here? Lord, help me, help me, help me. Help me. That's why the songwriter said, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply, what would I stain that within? Sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea. Heard my disparaging cry from the waters he lifted. I wish I had some help. Now safe am I because love lifted me. Oh, Lord, love lifted me. I tell God, I'm so glad that he, he kept me. And finally, he said, he said that he preserves our soul. That word soul is a Hebrew word. What is it, Reverend Scott? You, you were saying, Paul, you know, uh, Tricia gave it a, uh, uh, it's called uh, nefesh. Nefesh, Hebrew word nefesh, and uh, uh, and uh, it talks about he keepeth my soul. That word soul is nefesh because God wants you to understand uh, in this scripture. It wants us to understand not only will God keep us from going to church and with the shade and all of that, but He also keep us. He preserve our our soul. When it talks about nefesh, it talks about our soul. It, it's talking about the breath of God. Can I teach? If you remember in Genesis, man, when God formed man from the dust, man was just lifeless. But it said that God breathed in him. And he became a living. Come on, say amen, somebody. So, 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 so when I talk about he's going to preserve my soul, I'm talking about the breath of God that makes me live beyond this life. See, first of all, when he said that he would keep us, then he was keeping us. He was putting his shade upon us because now we're just going to Jerusalem. Now we're just going to the temple, but he does wrap these things up. Now you got to understand that I said, now some people say keep and preserve is the same thing. It is the same thing in that it does the same thing, but you got to understand when you add soul onto it, you're talking about nefesh. Now you're talking about the breath that only God has, the breath that makes me different than, than just little lower than the angel, that makes me different from an animal. So God will not only keep me as I try to go into the church, he will not only keep me as I try to go to worship, but when I come out the church and when I've sung my last song and when it's time to get up out of here, he has preserved my soul. Lord, help me. I know y'all already knew that. But, but I thank God that he's a keeper. I close it like this. I come from a neighborhood that's called Golden Gardens down in Cityville, Illinois. I never understood why they call it Golden Garden because there wasn't nothing golden about the garden. Matter of fact, we, we ain't had no gold. And we have a few gardens. Say amen, somebody. And if you had a garden, you better, you better wash it. Come on, say amen, somebody. So it was small. But Mother Solomon, it still had drug dealers. Still had gangs back in the day. Back in that day, it was the disciples 
and the vice lords. It still had trigger happy individuals. It still had bullies. And, and, and I saw folk that, that I grew up with that was killed execution style. I saw people that I lived next door to, Michelle, that, that they went to jail for drugs. One friend was killed for snitching about being out there and telling. And so, Lady Sophia, I, I asked myself the question. I said, how is it that I made it out? Ain't because I was just a preacher since I was 12 and, and, and I was a super, because I was still a kid. I knew the Lord, but I still knew how to cut up. I was still a kid. And I said, I said, what is it that I was able to get out because I wasn't so super, spirit, super spiritual or special and did everything right that there was some stuff that could have took me out too. But then I thought about it. What happened is that God blocked some stuff. And God shielded some stuff. And I know I ain't by myself. But do I have somebody, somebody that can tell somebody that I've got that same testimony? I tell you, I got to get out of here, y'all. I got to get out of here, y'all. But just like the old folks say, I'm about ready to tell somebody to hold my mute. Do you hear what I'm saying? Uh, do I have anybody, anybody, anybody here uh, that got that testimony? I come from a neighborhood where I could have been dead. I come from some places where I should have been dead. But it was nothing but God blocked it. I could have been the one that died early. I could have been the one in the drive-by. I could have been the one that was in the gang. But because the grace of God, God blocked it. And I just need somebody right now to just give God, give God some glory. Give God some glory right now for the stuff he blocked. Do you hear me? You ought to say, Lord, I don't know what you blocked, but you blocked a whole lot of stuff. I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but God, you blocked it. And I want to say thank you for what you blocked. I want to say thank you because you died. That means when you got up, you got up with all power, all power in my hands right now. Give God glory and say, Lord, I want to thank you for what you blocked. I want to thank you for what you shielded. I want to thank you for what you shaded. Say, I want to thank you. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. You ought to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, it ain't I been so good. Saying, neighbor, it ain't that I'm that cute because the truth of the matter, there's cuter people than me already dead. But saying, neighbor, oh, neighbor, I just want to give God glory for some reason. He blocked some stuff. And I want to tell somebody if he blocked some stuff, you ought to give God what you ought to give God for blocking some stuff. If he let you stay here what you're gonna do uh, to show them you grateful that you're still here and now that you're here you ought to bless his name now that you're here you ought to lift him up now that you're here you ought to give him glory give him glory tell somebody thank God for being my shield Drop one and a half. I was in the, uh, uh, tell somebody, I love him being my shield. I love to praise him. I love, I love to praise him. I love, I love to praise him. I love, I love to to pray this oh y'all got it come on I love to praise him pray I 
love to praise him. I love, oh, I love to praise him. I said, I love, I love to, I love. Y'all know why I praise him? I tell you, he's my rock, he's my rock, my sword, my rock, my. He's my will, he's my will in the middle. I know him never, I know him never. I said never let me down. He's just a tool that I have found. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said I love, I said hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, I love, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, I love, I love to, I love to praise his holy. Oh, he is my rock, he's my rock, my sword and my shield. Oh, he is my will, he is my will in the middle. I know he'll never, mama never let me down. He's just a jewel I have found. Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said I look, I said hallelujah, hallelujah. I said I look, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, I love, is that one? I love to hear. Oh, oh he's my rock. He's my rock, my sword and my. I said, he's my will. He's my, in the middle, in the middle. I know he'll never, never, never let me down. He's just a jewel. That I, I have found oh, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, I, I said, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, I love, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, I love, I love to, I love to. Late in the midnight hour, mama and daddy is going to sleep. Thought they forgot about me. I said, I tell somebody I love. Tell somebody I love, I love. I tell them I love, I love. I said, I love, I love. I said, I love, I love. I said, I love. I said, I love. Holy name. Give God some praise. He's my shield. I love it. I love. Late in the midnight hour, I love. When mama and daddy gonna leave, I love. I love. I love. I love. Good afternoon, Faith House. Would everyone please stand for the offertory prayer? Lord, help me to do what's right and not what's left. Per your word in Malachi 310a, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. I understand it is a simple plan, a tenth off the top of everything which you bless me with, which includes my time, my talent, and my financial resources. I righteously recognize every good and perfect gift comes from you. If I don't take anything in, I'm not required to give anything out. It's not equal giving, but it is equal sacrifice. My tithe is not what I give or pay, that's offering. It is what I owe, that's my tithe. 
God, I present my gift according to your will, your way, and most of all, your word, and my tithes and offerings, faithfully, consistently, and most of all, cheerfully. Lord, thank you for helping me to grow to know that receiving is activated by giving, as Luke 638 demonstrates. In the name of Christ, I give and I live. Amen. Would everyone please remain standing and next to the pews at the direction of the usher. Thank you. Hey, Reverend Scott, before you get out of here, let me let me holler. I got some serious I need to ask you a big favor before you get out of here. Okay. I know I'm not uh, Pastor Russell. You can carry it. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you, Lord, for these tithes and offerings, God, that we receive. Thank you, Lord, for those who are able to give, um, those who weren't. God, we pray, Lord, that these will be used for your kingdom building. All these things in your son in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to do our announcements and then go right into our communion. So you all uh, know how much I want to get home and read Psalms 121 over again. Matter of fact, I might even call you to see what part you on. Okay. We act like I know when I went straight to voicemail. I know when you hit decline. Now I want to let you. <laughs> if it don't ring, y'all, they sent you straight to the voicemail. Your phone didn't even ring. I tell y'all, you got to sit the voicemail. Good afternoon, church. As always, let's give our pastor a round of applause. Do we have any visitors today? We're all family? All right, well, I won't be before you long. I'm gonna just go over a few things for the week. As you know, we have Tuesday Teach Pastors back from Miami. All in the water acting just like you're having a great time. Watch out now. So, oh, no Tuesday Teach. Okay. And then we have choir rehearsal at Thursday at 7 o'clock. Along with that, we also have our beautification schedule that will also be on Thursday, November 7th, and that will be music, media, and you. But as always, if you can give an hour to your church, we greatly appreciate it. The more people we have, the quicker we can get it done. And then we have um, our men's ministry coming up, uh, as we do once a month. This month, it will be November 16th at 2 o'clock in the hospitality. And then also moving forward, as we know, we have the Thanksgiving holiday coming up. So I'm going to turn the mic over to Deacon Brown that he wants to go over a few things. When we get done with that, we will do some birthday songs. It's been a pleasure to be before you, Deacon Brown. Once again, um, I stand before you, church, to Give us another opportunity to praise and worship and show our love to God. Um, what I want to bring about is I want to talk to you about Thanksgiving, what we're trying to do as the Faith United Baptist Church, the Faith House. We want to try to donate to 10 families. 
Okay, what we're looking at right now is um, Minister Manuel has prepared a packet that we kind of got a list of things we need. And then also inside this packet will be a black folder. Um, there's a nomination form in there. Um, just because we have 10 families that we know about that we'll be taking guidance from our pastor on, you might, have know, you might know someone out there as well that you might want to nominate. Or you might see how we can show Faith House love to them and how we're being blessed. Um, I do want to take one moment, Pastor, just to talk about giving. Um, you know, what does the Bible say about giving? The Bible encourages us to give, and it, it needs to be voluntarily and done for the right motive. All right? Jesus said it is more, there is more happiness in giving than there is receiving. And in Le Proverbs 11, Numbers 11 and 25, the generous person will prosper, and whoever re Freshest others will himself be refreshed. The meaning is giving not only benefits the receiver, it also benefits the giver. So heartfelt giving is part of the form of religion that God approves. As he said in James first chapter 27 verse, a person who generously helps those in need works hand in hand with God who views such generosity as a loan made to him. And the Bible teaches God himself will repay the giver. So with that being said, um, the list that we have for donation that we would like to receive, we're trying to get 10 turkeys, 10 dozen of eggs, 10 gallons of milk, 20 boxes of Jiffy cornbread, 10 boxes of cake mix with icing, 20 cans of corn, 20 cans of green beans, 20 cans of cranberry sauce, 10 packs of dinner rolls, 20 boxes of stovetop stuffing, 40, box, 40 packets of gravy, 10 boxes of mashed potatoes, 10 boxes of macaroni, 10 packages to 10 packs at least of Kool-Aid. You know, we can't do wrong with that, right? And then, of course, we got um, 10 packs of butter, preferably to four packs for baking, and then, of course, five pounds of sugar. We need 10 bags of those as well. Now, we would like to have this in our hands. Uh, myself and Minister Manuel will be the points of contact. Um, you can, we also take monetary gifts if you would like to give that instead, if that might be more um, available for you than versus going to shop. Um, just get with me and Minister Manuel, and we can square that away as well. Um, we would like to have those in our hands that week of the 22nd, Wednesday, the, the week of the 22nd, which is 20. 20, 20 20 November, 20 November, because on 22 November, we would like to go bless those families, okay? Now, nominees, only because these are the 10 recognized families that we're looking at right now, please, if you got any nominees that you want to nominate, try to have those turned into us by the 14th of November. The 14th of November, reason I say that is because then we know we got to go shopping again. We got to go get some more baskets prepared. So with that being said, if, um, if I, did I miss anything, Minister Mang? Okay. So like I said, let's start that immediately. Please just get in contact with us. Um, you can get with me after the service if you need to get my phone number, um, contact information, or you get with Lady Catherine out of the admin office. They can make sure, uh, make sure she know to that on to anybody that calls and asks for it. And same thing with Minister Mang. Okay. Three churches. Three churches. If anybody right now know they're ready to give, I will gladly take your name now. Um, like I said, Pastor, he's giving three turkeys. Um, I know we're donating a turkey. Okay. Bink. Okay. We'll talk right after that. We'll square you away.
No, it's, it's food for families that uh, the faith out we have been about for Thanksgiving. Um, we, every, any Thanksgiving item, we've got Thanksgiving turkey, we got, we've got turkey, we've got stovetop stuff, we've got cake mix, we got corns, canned goods. Um, uh, all, right, all right, got you, got you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Eggs. All right. That's your mother. And Miss Sophia, Lady Sophia. We got, like I said, we got to get 10 baskets, so. Yes, mother. No. I'm sorry, lady darling. Yes. They, she, they got the mashed potatoes. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, we got we got canned goods. We still have all the canned goods. Um, corn. Somebody say corn. Corn. Okay. Said butter, please. Okay, mother. All right, gotcha. Okay, gravy. Uh, we, we still got. Did I say macaroni and cheese? I know that's a staple. Did I did I mention that one? All right, so Vernon. Okay, gravy. Uh, we still have. Um, we still got green green beans. We still have. Uh, That open back up Kool-Aid. You just got both of those. You got Kool-Aid in, Kool-Aid in green beans. Okay. I'm oh, sorry, lady, lady. Two turkeys. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Eight, eight, that's eight turkeys right there. Okay. Eight, eight, oh, and close. Yeah, I think we got three already. Okay. That's eight right here on count. Might need to ask for back. Okay, did I miss anybody? Yes, mother. Okay, mother Solomon. Okay, mother Solomon. Uh, okay, mother Solomon. Okay, they got the mashed potato. They got ten boxes of mashed potatoes. He, he, um, Mr. Rose, he's gonna do the, all the gravy, so he's buying those packs. Uh, what I have, what I have left, mother. I'm sorry. Cheese, yes. A turkey? Okay, Mother Solomon. Okay. Right. So we got so we got macaroni, we got macaroni and cheese. I guess the box is anybody gonna bring cheese with that or we, we add that to the list? We didn't have that on the list, so we'll add it on there. We'll, we'll put that on there. So okay. So what I what I would do, Pastor, um, next Sunday I come with a uh, list of what I have for the names we got we captured here, and then we'll go back one more time. We have it posted out front and in the back what we still need, and then that way we like Tuesday teach you can just sign up in those those holes that we have that we can go and fill, and that way we can ensure everybody basket has the same quality for each basket. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. We will do that. Okay. That's all I have. All right. We're going to uh, do the birthday and then the communion. And also, uh, on the nominations of the family, it will be private. 
So like I say, if you give me a name, so I want nobody to think if uh, somebody's name come, we ain't going to get up here and announce. We're going to take the families. And if you have somebody that you know in your neighborhood that needs, and if you hear it, and you know you ain't got your Thanksgiving stuff, we your church. Yeah. No, charity begins at home. Yeah. And then, because we, we definitely want to go out and be doing baskets, and you got, you're sitting up right here. So like I said, it, it's not going no further than the deliverance. So if you know somebody, please, we want to make sure that everybody has a, has a Thanksgiving. And I like this, that we want to have everybody have the identical, the same thing. And I, I thank the brothers, because y'all know up until this point, I was running around all these and rulers and all this stuff trying, trying to do it. And they were like, no, nah, we got that this year. So I just want to say I appreciate it. Amen. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Even we go to drop it off. But going down there in the hood sometime, it wasn't. Woo. I know they know me in the Gumpers, but some of them don't know me yet. <laughs> Last time, Reverend got a little nervous. Reverend said, Pastor, they coming and they rushing us. I'm like, come on. I said, Reverend. <laughs> I, I told Reverend, when you're in the hood, you got to look like you ain't scared. But Reverend, I said, oh, no, Reverend, we, we got to look hard. But we, we was in the church van practicing. I said, Reverend, we can't shake while we. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right, you go with us, you got to. Uh, uh. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Okay, so bring it here next on the 10th. Okay, so we'll start next week on the 10th. Okay, all right, let's do our birthdays, and then we're going to do the community so y'all can uh, go. We, we, we apologize, but I think that's very important to be a blessing to the, uh, uh, to the household. Uh, uh, come on, let's do our uh, birthdays. Lady Catherine Michonne, Michonne, big 30. Big 30, 3 0. I didn't know who he was. He got all shaved up and stuff. I said, boy, like he about ready to have some baby, make some babies or something. Oh, uh, what y'all doing? How you gonna do this, Pookie? How we gonna do it? You wanna do no special? Whoa, oh, 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 oh. happy birthday. 3 0, happy, happy birthday. birthday. 44, happy, happy birthday. Whoa. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to oh, you. Oh, you're looking good. good. Oh, you're looking you look fine. fine. And we, and we hope, hope you had a great time. Oh, happy birthday, birthday to you. Here we go, 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 go. Happy, happy birthday, young preacher. Happy birthday, ex player. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, 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 you're, you're looking, looking good. good. Oh, you're looking, looking fine. fine. And we hope, hope you had a great time. Oh, happy birthday. 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 Son from being this big to 3 0 2 bless my two and I'ma turn over to my poo to do the two for her mama two to you Birthday, amen. Give him a head, amen. I thought you would break out with I, th I thought you go. <laughs> amen. At this time, we're going to get ready to do our communion. Come on up, Reverend Manuel. We're standing up there. I, I tell Reverend Manuel, this is uh, uh, the other two times he was doing it. He was doing it for his ordination and he was practicing. And so now is the day of. Uh, of the uh, official, he he's a he he's official now. He's official now, and uh, we we truly we truly praise God. We truly praise God. You know, technically.
in the church, the, uh, the sacraments are supposed to be handled by ordained. But when you don't have the ordained, then you can delegate. You, you can delegate. So I, I told him it's another level. Another level. Now you can't drop the sacraments on the floor or nothing. You know? <laughs> but uh, right now, uh, communion is where we, it's symbolic. Where we just say, thank you, Lord, you know, for the sacrifice of your son. You know, the blood he shed on Calvary. You know, all that he went through, he was beaten, merciful. Beaten, I mean, just brutally beaten, brutally beaten. And sometimes people say he was beaten so bad they broke every bone in his body. That's not biblical. No bones were broken. As brutal as he was beaten. But when you think about that he loved us that much, even when we were that bad, he still loved us that much to send his son. When we messed up in the Garden of Eden, that could have been it. Could have been like, you know what, I gave y'all a chance, and this is how y'all thank me. So all of y'all just go on down there to Lucifer, Lucifer and live eternally. But thank God, thank God, John 3, 16, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have a lasting life. And so the Bible says as often as we do it, do it in remembrance of him. It's not because a certain amount. Some churches be like, if you don't do it on the first Sunday, you're going to hell. That's a lot. You don't do it on the second day. There is nowhere biblically where it says, what's Sunday? It just says, as often as you do it, do it for the right reason. And the reason is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So at this time, as Minister Manuel comes and prays over the sacraments, we'll wash our hands and then distribute it. Well, Father, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this symbolic period, well, Father, that, that represents the, your body and your blood that was shed on the cross, so, Father. We thank you now for all the many blessings you bestowed upon us as far as the Father. Thank you once again for this time. It also we pray. Amen. It was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood for me. One day when I was lost, He died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. They whipped Him all night long. They whipped Him all night long. They whipped Him all night long for me. 
Together, the body. Together, the blood. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about they sung a hymn. We're going to read our, our covenant and get ready to go home. Thank you all again for an electrifying experience. Like I say, from call to worship to praise and worship. I don't know what y'all jokers ate, Michelle. I'm telling you, boy. In the quiet, musicians, media. I mean, everybody. It's been going on from this morning, even before y'all get here. At me in Sunday school, really been a blessing. Really been a blessing. I was telling uh, Elijah today, I said, uh, you, you, you can't never date nobody else because I like her, so can't nobody else come here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I mean, I love to see a young lady go to church. I mean, these days, you just don't see that. You just don't see it. And I'm impressed. I want to thank you so much. You are truly a blessing. I want to put you on the spot, but I really admire that. I, I really admire that. I always have Christ in the middle. Let's stand and read our, read our covenant. Amen. I ain't never seen Elijah smile so much. I ain't going to lie. But you lie to be smiling. I don't even be sitting there funny. Elijah be like, <laughs> Amen. All right. I was trying to wait the last stop smiling, but I guess I'm going to have to go ahead on. Okay. <laughs> Together, having been led, as we believe by the Spirit of God, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, we do now, in the presence of God, in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another's one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindreds and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale of and the use of destructive drugs or intoxicating drinks as a beverage, to shun pornography, to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior, we further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember one another in prayer, to aid one another in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and Christian courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will, as soon as possible, unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Is that it? Okay, amen. Amen. Just want to make sure. Let us pray our closing prayer once again. Just remember, God is our helper. He's our keeper, and he's our preserver. And the difference between him being our keeper and our preserver is he kept us on our way to worship, but now he preserves our soul. That's the breath of God himself that blows into us and makes us live eternally. Father God, now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for God for another wonderful worship experience. God, thank you for your word. God, we ask God that it would continue, to God, to sink into our, into our veins and our arteries, God, and our, our spiritual vessels right now. God, we always want to be the best version that we can be in you. So, God, let us continue to decrease that you may increase, and that, God, that we will show up and show out and give you the glory in advance. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Give somebody a great big hug. So you better take advantage. This might be the only one you get all week now. Amen. Amen. Amen.